Now the next application uh, is this one down here called QTPFS GUI. Uh, what that stands for is there is um, a bunch of tools called uh, PFS and it is a graphical user interface or GUI for PFS and is written in um, uh, a language called QT. Uh, so that's where the QT PFS GUI comes from. If we're looking at what we're looking at here is um, uh, a series of pictures that I took. You can see there in the darker picture, there's a lot more information in the clouds, but some of the shadows weren't visible. And what this allows us to do is uh, we can create a HDR image that's built from three images that I took, a medium one, a dark one, and a light one, uh, and it will be able to combine all those in a way that allows us to then represent that picture in something that might be a little bit closer to uh, what the human eye saw. Um, QDPFS GUI supports a number of automatic alignment uh, technologies. One of them is uh, an alignment application that comes with Hugin, but I'm not going to use that for the moment. Um, so I'm going to go through what it's like to manually align some images. And they might load in their own time. I think we've had a technical malfunction. Oh no, there we go. Okay. So the reason it looks all dark and crazy uh, is because there's a the mode I'm using to see the two images overlapped. Um, it has it black when the, the dots are the same colour or has it white when they're completely different, which makes it really obvious when they're, um, they're out of alignment. So if we view the other one, you can see that we probably moved that one up a little bit. And we'll come back and we'll look at different blending modes a bit later when we touch on the GIMP. And you see over here, because I took this with by hand, the, uh, it had rotated a little bit using QTPFS GUI's um, manual alignment tools. We don't actually have the ability to rotate the image as such. Um, so we're just going to live with that one for the moment. But uh, if you do use the, uh, the Hugin align image stack technology it can distort the images to to match up correctly so when we hit the finish button here we'll end up with our HDR image which as I said before contains a lot more information on the lightness and the darkness of the different areas based upon those three photos that I took it looks a little bit washed out at the moment but that's because we're compressing all that extra information down into something that we can see on the screen here um, in actual fact we can't really represent what the picture looks like on in what they call RGB color space which is what the the screen displays uh, so we do what we call tone mapping which is a way of taking that image uh, and applying some mathematical formulas to it and converting it to something that uh, we can see on the screen and, uh, and looks a little bit interesting so I've let this one run its full length of time just so you can get a bit of an idea of how long it usually takes for uh, a tone mapping to uh, to happen. Um, the rest of them I've skipped so we don't have to sit here and wait but uh, it is a can be a lengthy process because it's got a, a big image to, um, to process. There's a whole range of different algorithms we can use to uh, to generate these tone mappings. Once we see this one pop up you might get a little bit of an idea of of what I'm talking about. Probably should have showed you some examples first. Maybe. Oh, it's still running. Has anyone ever seen any HDR images before? No? Okay, so we can see it's a very different picture to, uh, to what we had before. Um, we've got a lot more highlights in the clouds and shadows uh, that are visible at the same time that we wouldn't have had before. We can see over here where it wasn't aligned properly, it's a little bit blurry. Um, but on the whole, I think it's a nice, a nicer image than it was originally. So we'll go and we'll save that one. And we'll call it Marina. That's a really basic thing using the default settings for the, the default algorithm. We'll close this one and we'll do something a little bit more complex. 
the sunrise example that I showed a little bit earlier is probably a really good example of why you would want to do something like this um, because you know there's, there's shadows and highlights that you just can't see at the same time I'm going to leave the alignment off because I took this with a tripod and I know that the images are going to be uh, very close to each other so if we go down we can pick something like these rails here that give us a really good idea and we can see if we move it across that uh, it was already pretty close to being in line so we'll leave it where it was for the most part you can see there that I've moved while the uh, while the camera was taking the three different images that's why I avoid taking photos of people landscapes never move so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to um, create three different tone mappings using uh, three very different algorithms we can see again it looks pretty washed out compared to what it was before but there's a lot more information uh, in the clouds, a lot more detail than there was in any of the original images so we'll start with the uh, Mantiuk uh, uh, algorithm, I'll leave that at its default settings um, but as you can see there's a whole whole slew of different ones that we can use here it really comes down to experimentation and um, finding something that suits what you want, every image is different I know it looks like I'm going to do the fat all first uh, so I'll go with some numbers that I know uh, are nice because I could spend hours sitting here playing with it is everyone bored yet? <laughs> well, you've already seen it three times this morning so we hit apply here and rather than make you sit through the uh, entire processing time I think we'll go and skip it I hope I went and skipped it yeah I did come on off you go I think I must have been falling asleep about that point okay so here's our finished image using the uh, the FATAL algorithm and we can see here that there's, there's a huge amount of um, you know, all this dark area is now bright and has a lot of detail in it and we still have all that extra detail up in the clouds there that we didn't have in the original image um, we'll go with the Mantiuk as well and this will give us a bit of an idea of, of just kind of the variation um, of the different types of uh, images that we can get a lot of it's you know, you could, you could get something that looks really natural you could come up with something that looks amazingly stylized uh, we need to go with the Drago here as well um, which should give us a fairly subdued image I think and we'll turn down the um, the initial brightness because it ends up making a fairly bright image oh, there we go maybe Okay, so I'm just going to save all those. You don't need to watch me save all them. Chop, chop. Wow. Okay, 